Hello and welcome. Many thanks for your company. You're joining me, Natalie McDonald, for another Sydney Direct. Now, it's been a pretty heavy data week for the Australian economy. Matt Simpson of Think Forex joins us today from his office down in Melbourne to give us more. Now, Matt, starting with that RBA meeting and the central bank did opt to hold rates for a 15th straight month. Where do you sit in the debate as to whether the bank does act, whether it will hike or indeed lower? rates. Let's get a little bit more interesting following yesterday's disappointing growth data um, but in terms of if they're going to hike uh, lower or keep where they are um, they're going to stay steady possibly until mid next year. The reason I say that is because it's the housing market it's the only section that's popping the economy up at the moment so they're likely to bring in micro prudential tools first see how that goes and then of course monitor what's going on uh, with the Fed. If they don't raise interest rates and there are problems, then I think there's going to put pressure on the RBA to lower interest rates themselves after, implement, uh, after implementing the, uh, the macro prudential tools. They're certainly not going to be raising them anytime soon and they're not going to rush to lower them either. Um, so we've got time on our sides. I, I think we'll be getting at least another six months of keeping it steady for now. GDP numbers did come in lower than expected. What did analysts miss in their forecasts? And is the figure really as bad as it seems? Well, as always, if you're trading the release, then it's going to be a big thing uh, that it was missed. Um, now, I'm not sure exactly what the particular number the analysts missed amongst themselves. Remember, this is just a collection of other analysts' opinions. Um, but really, I don't even think the government were expecting it to come in that much lower. Uh, Bill Shorten himself even said um, that they knew it would come in softer, but not that soft. Um, RBA have repeatedly said that they do expect growth to remain below trend for the foreseeable future. Um, but it's also the fact that yesterday's figures showed that it missed the target on the quarter over quarter growth and year on year growth as well. Um, so it puts a lot of pressure in other figures to be coming out that they need to be getting good employment, etc. etc. If we don't start getting good numbers elsewhere, then trade is going to continue to short the Australian dollar in anticipation of lower growth down the road. Now Matt, last time when we spoke we did discuss the impact of a slide in commodity prices on that trade balance figure. How did the number fare this month? We've literally just had the trade balance data and that came in above expectations. Now commodity prices are still falling um, at a record rate um, but trade balance and commodity prices aren't intertwined every single release that comes out um, is it will take time for commodity prices to filter through to the trade balance um, but we saw net imports and net exports pretty much net um, and the trade balance itself however the deficit has narrowed now we've seen a little bit of a relief rally for Aussie dollar off those lows um, but it doesn't change the trend overall so if you were long that trade fantastic um, but keep in mind we are at four year lows and you probably don't want to be fighting that trend just yet so it was a nice little reprieve a little bit of short covering there, um, but ultimately it's just one day to release amongst many. And the broader picture is down. Lastly then, Matt, how do Aussie dollar movements in reaction to the week's events tie in with the longer term trading patterns that we're seeing? Well, carrying on from the previous question, uh, we are at four year lows. The broader trend is clearly down and I think there's a lot more downside into next year, possibly as lower as the 77. Um, so even if we do get a bit of a relief rally this week, um, we're still are down for the week as we speak. We have seen a few gains, um, but even if we do start to see gains even above 85, 86 cents, it's, it would just be corrective to me and a better price to get short. As we get to, front, to tomorrow even, it's over to the US, we've got the number farm payrolls data. So that will be, is it good data or not for the US? Good data from the US, uh, we'll see uh, Aussie dollar go down and poor data from the US, we'll see Aussie dollar go up. Um, so really it's over to the, uh, the US now and even if we get really bad employment figures tomorrow from the US, I still suspect, suspect the Aussie will be finishing down for the week because of the broader trend and the lower commodity prices. Matt Simpson there of Think Forex talking to us from their office down in Melbourne. That is all we've got time for right now. However, I'll be back shortly with plenty more exclusive interviews for you right here from Sydney, Australia. For now, though, it's goodbye.